Welcome to Capital Connections, your weekly access to politics and policy along the I-89 and I-91 corridors and how it impacts our region. I'm John O'Connor, your host. We're coming to you from the H. Raymond Danforth Library on the campus of New England College. On today's show, I'll be joined by Kate Lusco, the Executive Director of Stay Work Play New Hampshire, and our focus will be on getting young people to stay, work, and play in New Hampshire. But first, these messages from the good businesses that believe a well-informed community is the greatest strength in sustaining a strong democracy. So please, stay with us. Joining me today is Kate Lusco, the Executive Director of Stay, Work, Play New Hampshire. Kate, thanks so much for being here. Sure, thanks for having me. Um, I guess the first thing I'd like to know is sort of the history of Stay, Work, Play and its mission. Sure. So there's history back to about 2007 when Steve Reno was the chancellor of the university system. He had found in traveling to companies around the state that they couldn't find young workers and in being on the various campuses that young workers couldn't find jobs. So they surveyed students to figure out what was going on, who was leaving, who was staying. They found that about 50% of those surveyed were staying. And so there was a 55% initiative that by increasing that number by 5%, there would be millions of dollars of economic benefit to New Hampshire. So that initiative caught the attention of Governor Lynch, who had a task force focused on young worker retention. One of the recommendations that came out of the task force was that a nonprofit be formed to carry through on some of the other recommendations. So Stay Work Play was formed as a nonprofit in 2009. Um, so we, we really got going in 2010. So still relatively new. Re relatively new and, yep. and its mission. So our focus is on encouraging 20 and 30 year olds to stay, work and play in New Hampshire. Okay, and is it, is it really focused on the kids that are in colleges now? Um, or is it on attracting people from who go to school in Massachusetts or Vermont to move into the state, or is it both? So technically it's both. Uh, primarily for capacity purposes, right now our primary focus is retention, um, and that someday, you know, when we have more bandwidth that we'll be able to kind of take the show on the road and look more at recruitment. But for now, we spend a lot of time on college campuses talking with students, whether they're from here or not, but they're here now. Well, and, and so even if they're in New Hampshire, it's don't leave to take a job elsewhere. Right. Stay here, right. work, and play. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 your name says it all, doesn't it? It does. We've tried to come up with a tagline, <laughs> and there's really nothing more to add. Um, are you getting resonance with students um, from the state wanting to stay, or are there students from out of state, or is it just a, a equal balance? It really varies. Um, a lot of students who are from somewhere else are going home. Honestly, with the economic climate, a lot of students have to go home, right? They just have to move back home where it's free, whether that's in New Hampshire or whether that's somewhere else. Um, but we run into a lot of students who aren't from here but would like to stick around if they can find a job. So it really, it varies. And how many businesses do you work with to partner uh, to help the students find jobs? Well, so that number depends upon sort of what context we're talking mm -hmm. about. We have a, our board of directors is about 11 people. Our board of advisors, we're up to almost 25. But then there's a whole handful of other companies that we have more informal relationships with, but we help them promote jobs. We have an internship only website. So we encourage companies to post internships on that site. So it depends what the context is, but really, you know, that's, that's one of our primary focuses is connecting with businesses, finding out you know what sorts of people they're looking to hire so that we can help talk about those things. And um, do you see the hiring across all sectors of the economy? So certainly, High tech, especially down in the southern part of the state, you know, there's there's lots of people both with entrepreneurship and with high tech really trying to make New Hampshire a destination for those things. I've also heard a lot about manufacturing or advanced manufacturing coming back. Um, we were part of a roundtable that uh, Congresswoman Custer had a few weeks ago with manufacturers and community colleges. So I think we'll see a, a good resurgence in, the, in those sorts of jobs and better education, if you will, around what those jobs entail. And well, just out of curiosity, what what do those what did you learn from the round table? What do those jobs entail? What what skills do you need? Well, so I think the misconception that honestly students have, but 
one of the comments was made that parents have it. And so parents have this idea that it's a switch up, you know, that it's dirty and dark and, you know, all sorts of repetition. And so they may be encouraging their kids not to do those sorts of jobs when really um, with all the stuff that goes on with, um, you know, green technology and um, it's, it's clean and it's really technical. A lot of things are very computerized. Um, but they were talking about if kids go to community college after high school for two years, don't quote me on this, but that they com could come out making around $50,000 a year in advanced manufacturing, which is... Which is a reasonably well-paying job. For a two-year degree, too. For, two, for, for any degree. And yeah. I mean, starting that's your starting job. Right. I mean, that's, that's above the medium wage. Yep, and there's great availability. Um, I also sit on the state's job training fund committee. Um, and so we get a lot of companies that come in looking for funding to train their workers. And so we see a lot of manufacturing companies hmm. too. And I, just to follow up with this sort of manufacturing thing, I mean, I, I, with high tech manufacturing, I actually think clean, I think really programming computers in many ways to make them do the work and, right. and just, you know, real quality control. Is that, I mean, that, is that, was I off base? No, but I think you should be telling high schoolers to <laughs> well, <laughs> exactly that. Well, we, we try to get high schoolers to tune in too, so. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, so I guess uh, we're just about out of time with this segment, but when we return, I'd like to focus on sort of the broad demographic challenges that the state of New Hampshire faces and maybe look at the region as well. So please stay with us. Joining me today is Kate Lesko, the Executive Director of Stay Work Play New Hampshire. We're going to talk a little bit about the demographic issues that her organization faces. So, so Kate, tell, tell me, and maybe I'm wrong in this, but I, my impression is that we're not seeing the move-ins that we saw in the 80s or 90s and in New Hampshire specifically, and maybe even to the region. Is that, is that my impression correct? Yeah, so there are um, both the New Hampshire Center for Public Policy Studies and the Corsi Institute at UNH. They have some great graphs where you can see the trends of in-migration over the course of time. But it is true that people aren't coming to New Hampshire in the you know, numbers that they were years ago. I mean, to, to work not and to live and not to visit. Right. But this is Right, my not great tourism, right, actually coming to, to relocate here. Um, and there's actually a study, a great study that the New Hampshire Center for Public Policies did that uh, is called From Tailwinds to Headwinds, which addresses these sorts of things. But there's a statistic in there along the lines of in 17 years, um, half of New Hampshire's population will be over 65. Which if is, the trends continue. Yes, on the path that we're on now, which is, that's, <laughs> that's pretty staggering. And that it's got to have implications across every town, every community, yep. um, how we live our lives. And really, it's, I mean, it's hard to think about how pervasive that sort of shift is. Well, and great opportunity, right? If, although 17 years, I think, to a student in college is a really long time, but if we can get that message across, I mean, if all these people are going to be retiring in that period of time, there's lots of opportunity to to get in and for some, likely some quick upward mobility. And so your organization is targeting young people, say 20 to 30-ish. Um, and how, if you made a dent, what would you, how would you like to move the needle, I guess? What, in 15 years or 17 years, how, how would we know the success of your organization? Well, so we target 20 to 40, so both 20-somethings and 30-somethings. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because back we had talked about the 55% initiative. So in 2007, 50% of the students surveyed were staying. Well, now that number is closer to, I think, like 67% because of the economy, right? That students are just naturally moving back home as opposed to somewhere else if they wanted to leave. And so that gets a little bit mushy, right? Does that, what, what else could that be attributed to? Um, we did reconduct surveys earlier this year, similar to those that were done. And so when we, you know, once we publish the results of those, we'll have some idea how things have changed over the past few years. Um, but it, it, it gets tricky to try and attribute movement or lack of movement to particular things. So they're macroeconomic forces, the broad economy, student debt, things like that, that would shift 
consumer behavior. Right, right, uh, and so our role is to primarily talk about what makes New Hampshire great. So break through these ideas that there's no young people, that there's no jobs, that there's nothing fun to do on the weekend. You know, so we do a lot of more of the publicity side to let students know what exists in New Hampshire. And with the snow we've had recently, <laughs> there's got to be plenty of fun things to do on the weekend. Absolutely. As long as you're willing to go outside. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the, let's continue with that sort of demographic theme for a second. Is this a New Hampshire isolated issue? Or are we seeing this in, across northern New England? Or is that something you haven't really followed? Well, so again, I don't claim to be a demographer, but I know that they've talked about how with the recent economic climate over the past few years that um, Massachusetts has actually seen a positive in migration or um, positive impact to their population because typically during normal economies, they lose more people than they keep. And so in this case, they're actually, you know, sort of coming out more positively than they would otherwise. But certainly it's not something that's specific to New Hampshire. We've done a little bit of uh, research into what other states are doing, had conversations with people, even as far as Sarasota County. Um, they were inquiring, we have a student loan repayment program, and so they were inquiring about that and how that helps with retention and things. So other people are certainly thinking about it. So let's just a uh, quick, quick sort of time out, the student loan repayment program. Yep. What is that about? Sure, so it's called our challenge grant, and companies offer it like they would health insurance or a gym membership, but when they hire a recent New Hampshire grad, one participating company doesn't specify New Hampshire, they'll hire any graduate, um, that over the course of the first four years of their employment, they commit to paying $8,000 towards that grad's student loans. So, uh, so the student really just gets the debt reduction uh, just for, for getting paid. Right. Um, so that, that, that's got to be a, a good thing. Does it, has the state ever looked at doing something like that? Or have you talked to them about the state incentivizing students to stay, especially in the state schools that we have? Yeah, we've had conversations about how we could make the challenge grant more desirable to employers via the legislature. So that might be a conversation that we have. But when it gets into politics, you know, we can't we can't get too active. Um, but I think that this is a I mean, it's a unique benefit and it, it's a way for a company to retain a worker and for New Hampshire to retain uh, workforce. Right. And uh, and that demographic trend that we talked about to move that so that we have a heterogeneous population, yeah. which I think in the long run, I, I think that's going to be good for the towns. Mm -hmm. So, well, we're out of time in this segment, but when we return, we'll continue our conversation. So please stay with us. Joining me is Kate Lisko, the executive director of Stay Work Play New Hampshire. Kate, so let's talk, I, I wanna get a little bit about the long-term future, mm -hmm. but I, wanna, I guess ground it in today. Um, and it seems to me, organizations like yours, the website's gotta be so important. Yep. Can you tell me, b before we get to the future, what are you doing, what's happening in the web? If I went to your website, what would I see? Sure, so the website is designed to be a central resource for 20 and 30 year olds. Um, within the three different areas. So in Stay, there's information on uh, finding somewhere to live, whether it's buying a house, finding an apartment, going to graduate school. We list all of the undergrad and graduate schools in the state. The Young Professionals Networks fall under there. Work, there's resources on finding an internship, finding a job, starting a business in New Hampshire, which is relevant for a lot of people. And then play is kind of the, the easy one, but it's topical. So there's well, it's fun too. It is fun. <laughs> um, but it's organized. There's museums and camping and theater and shopping. I mean, it really, you know, there's a lot of information in there. And, and we try and be the place that someone goes to find the experts. So we're not trying to be those experts, but just to be the one. A, to a conduit. Them. Yeah. So uh, do you have bloggers? We do. We have, we started our blog just over a year ago, and it's now the most visited page on our website. Um, we have about 18 people that write on a regular basis from different parts of the state. Uh, we have a food and drink blog. We feature nonprofits in something called Doing Good. Um, we feature companies, fun things to do. It really runs the gamut, but it's a great way. People have said it captures the essence of New Hampshire. Because uh, they're people who are doing what we're trying to get people to do, talking about their lives. So what recently, the last two months, what's the most interesting blog post? 
So the ones that always do really well, we have a girl who blogs from up in Berlin, and she wrote one about sort of, you know you're from New Hampshire if, and then this series of different things that people from New Hampshire would appreciate. And in New Hampshire, we have a lot of pride, and so those ones always get a lot of um, a lot of publicity, but I never know. I go through and edit them before we publish them, and it's so fun for me to get to see, you know, what what people what, what, choose to write about. Um, and are they biased toward play in the, the blog posts or the? It depends. Um, some of them. Someone wrote a post recently about how to network. Um, someone wrote one one time about how to be the best intern. So it sort of varies. So there's a lot of good, useful information. Yep. At some point, we've talked with New Hampshire Housing about doing a housing-themed segment, just even if it's about credit score, something that relates to the housing world. Um, but we haven't launched that yet. But we'll get that. And um, I, I want to get to the future, but before since you mentioned housing. Is that a real barrier for young people, uh, access to housing? Uh, so it depends. You know, I mean, I think oftentimes people who are in New Hampshire talk about the affordability of housing, but if you're fresh out of college, that can be a little bit varying. Um, I know there's conversations being had about trying to figure out workforce housing arrangements. There are different groups. We actually just posted an internship yesterday with the group on the seacoast mm -hmm. that's sort of in charge of workforce housing in that part of the state. So there are lots of conversations being had to make sure that there are options. Um, but on the other side of the spectrum, which doesn't relate to us, is housing for folks that are retiring, right? And that's becoming an and issue as our population ages. So uh, let's turn this to the future. It's, it's, we're, we're 20 years down the road. What, what, what strategies have you implemented in the last 20 years that really worked? Or what would you like to do that you'd say, boy, this really made a difference in our mission? Well, so a lot of what we've worked to build over the past few years is just recognition, right? Is what we are trying to do is promote New Hampshire. And so the more people that know that Stay Work Play exists, the better opportunity we have to reach them and talk about all that makes it great. So, so I'm, I'm thinking a lot of traffic then. Yep. A long-term strategy is really building a lot of traffic yep. to the resources you offer. One of our board members wants our social media following to be higher, so Facebook and Twitter, than any other um, media outlet in the state. So Union Leader, WMUR, or anything like that, New Hampshire Public Radio. So that's a goal that, a little bit of a lofty goal that he set for us. Um, you know, we've had conversations about wouldn't it be great if when you came into New Hampshire, in addition to the Welcome to New Hampshire tourism information, that there was, you know, stay, work, play. So we're not only encouraging people to come visit, but encouraging them to think about starting their business here or, you know, moving their life here. So in the long run, I mean, from a strategic perspective, is it desirable to have partnerships with the government or either state or town governments to help this process, like the city of Manchester or Nashua or Portsmouth? Yeah, and we've done a lot with different entities presented to different groups. And really, in so many ways, I mean, we're not, there's no sales pitch, right? We're all essentially working towards the th same thing. We want to make New Hampshire a great place to be, even though specifically it's in different in different areas. But so there's a lot of really good alignment and only, you know, only f more collaboration, I'm sure, in the future. And just one last question, we're about out of time. Is there one, are the regions very different that you face? Yes, absolutely. And which, which are the, where are the biggest challenges? Well, certainly Ross Cattell just put out that paper on the two New Hampshires, right? Mm -hmm. The North Country is, is a very different is a very different place and requires different strategies than the rest right, of Right, and the North Country really isn't the North Country, it's rural New Hampshire. Right. Which is north and west, and uh, so you're right, it is very different. What's the strategy for young people in that area? Well, so I think jobs are the biggest issue up there, is you know trying to get people to stick around. And, 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 and to businesses to start and that sort of thing. Yeah. We're out of time, but thanks so much for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Capital Connections, your weekly access to politics and policy along the I-89 and I-91 corridors. If you have a comment or suggestion for a future show, please email me. And join us again at this same time next week for another edition of Capital Connections. Joining me is Kate Lisko, the executive director of Stay Work Play New Hampshire. Kate, so let's talk. I, I want to get a little bit about the long-term future, mm -hmm. but I want—I guess—ground it in today. 
Um, and it seems to me, organizations like yours, the website's got to be so important. Yep. Can you tell me, b before we get to the future, what are you doing? What's happening in the web? If I went to your website, what would I see? Sure. So the website is designed to be a central resource for 20 and 30-year-olds um, within the three different areas. So in Stay, there's information on uh, finding somewhere to live, whether it's buying a house, finding an apartment, going to graduate school. We list all of the undergrad and graduate schools in the state, the young professionals networks fall under their work. There's resources on finding an internship, finding a job, starting a business in New Hampshire, which is relevant for a lot of people. And then play is kind of the, the easy one, but it's topical. So there's well, it's fun too. It is fun. <laughs> um, but it's organized. There's museums and camping and theater and shopping. I mean, it really, you know, there's a lot of information in there. And, and we try and be the place that someone goes to find the experts. So we're not trying to be those experts, but just to be the one. A, to a conduit. Them. Yeah. So uh, do you have bloggers? We do. We have, we started our blog just over a year ago and it's now the most visited page on our website. Um, we have about 18 people that write on a regular basis from different parts of the state. Uh, we have a food and drink blog. We feature nonprofits in something called Doing Good. Um, we feature companies, fun things to do. It really runs the gamut, but it's a great way. People have said it captures the essence of New Hampshire because uh, they're people who are doing what we're trying to get people to do, talking about their lives. So what recently, the last two months, what's the most interesting blog post? So the ones that always do really well, we have a girl who blogs from up in Berlin, and she wrote one about sort of, you know you're from New Hampshire if, and then this series of different things that people from New Hampshire would appreciate. And in New Hampshire, we have a lot of pride, and so those ones always get a lot of, um, a lot of publicity. But I never know. I go through and edit them before we publish them, and it's so fun for me to get to see, you know, what... What people well, well, choose to write about, um, and uh, are they biased toward play in the, the blog posts or the? It depends. Um, some of them. Someone wrote a post recently about how to network. Um, someone wrote one one time about how to be the best intern. So it sort of varies. So there's a lot of good, useful information. Yep. At some point, we've talked with New Hampshire Housing about doing a housing themed segment. Just even if it's about credit score, something that relates to the housing world. Um, but we haven't launched that yet. But we'll get that. And um, I, I want to get to the future, but before, since you mentioned housing, is that a real barrier for young people, uh, access to housing? Uh, so it depends. You know, I mean, if, I think oftentimes people who are in New Hampshire talk about the affordability of housing, but if you're fresh out of college, that can be a little bit varying. Um, I know there's conversations being had about trying to figure out workforce housing arrangements. There are different groups. We actually just posted an internship yesterday with the group on the seacoast mm -hmm. that's sort of in charge of workforce housing in that part of the state. So there are lots of conversations being had to make sure that there are options. Um, but on the other side of the spectrum, which doesn't relate to us, is housing for folks that are retiring, right? And that's becoming an um, issue as our population ages. So uh, let's turn this to the future. It's, it's, we're, we're 20 years down the road. What, what what strategies have you implemented in the last 20 years that really worked? Or what would you like to do that you'd say, boy, this really made a difference in our mission? Well, so a lot of what we've worked to build over the past few years is just recognition, right? Is what we are trying to do is promote New Hampshire. And so the more people that know that Stay Work Play exists, the better opportunity we have to reach them and talk about all that makes it great. So, so I'm, I'm thinking a lot of traffic then. Yep. A long-term strategy is really building a lot of traffic yep. to the resources you offer. One of our board members wants our social media following to be higher, so Facebook and Twitter, than any other um, media outlet in the state. So Union Leader, WMUR, anything like that, New Hampshire Public Radio. So that's a goal that, a little bit of a lofty goal that he set for us. Um, you know, we've had conversations about wouldn't it be great if when you came into New Hampshire, in addition to the Welcome to New Hampshire tourism information, that there was, you know, stay, work, play. So we're not only encouraging people to come visit, but encouraging them to think about starting their business here or, you know, moving their life here. So in the long run, I mean, from a strategic perspective, 
is it desirable to have partnerships with the government or either state or town governments to help this process like the city of Manchester or Nashua or Portsmouth? Yeah, and we've done a lot with different entities presented to different groups. And really, in so many ways, I mean, we're not, there's no sales pitch, right? We're all essentially working towards the th same thing. We want to make New Hampshire a great place to be, even though specifically it's in different in different areas. But so there's a lot of really good alignment and only, you know, only more collaboration, I'm sure, in the future. And just one last question, we're about out of time. Is there one, are the regions very different that you face? Yes, absolutely. And which, which are the, where are the biggest challenges? Well, certainly Ross Cattell just put out that paper on the two New Hampshires, right? Mm -hmm. The North Country is, is a very different, is a diver, very different place and requires different strategies than the rest right. of the Right, and the North Country really isn't the North Country, it's rural New Hampshire. Right. Which is north and west. And uh, so you're right, it is very different. What's the strategy for young people in that area? Well, so I think jobs are the biggest issue up there is, you know, trying to get people to stick around and, and, and to businesses to start and that sort of thing. Yeah. We're out of time, but thanks so much for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Capital Connections, your weekly access to politics and policy along the I-89 and I-91 corridors. If you have a comment or suggestion for a future show, please email me and join us again at this same time next week for another edition of Capital Connections.